The Peloponnesian War was a clash of empires that spanned decades. Amid this struggle, certain battles acquired particular strategic importance. Pylos and Dilius are two notable examples. These confrontations not only altered the balance of power in the Aegean, but also exposed the vulnerabilities of both powers, Athens and Sparta, and laid the groundwork for the events that would culminate in the fall of the Athenian Empire. In the year 425 BC, during the Peloponnesian War, the Athenians, under the leadership of General Demosthenes, launched an expedition into the Peloponnese to establish a base from which they could harass the Spartan forces. They chose to fortify the region of Pylos, located on the southwest coast of the Peloponnese, because of its strategic position. Pylos not only offered a safe natural harbor, but also had easy access to Messenia, a region that had historically been hostile to Sparta. While the Athenians worked feverishly on the fortifications, the Spartan fleet, led by the Nevarch Alcide, attempted to stop these efforts. The Spartans quickly realized that allowing the Athenians to establish a base at Pylos would be a direct threat to their territory and a constant source of raids and attacks. However, Demosthenes and his men managed to repel the initial attacks and complete the defenses, thus establishing a solid position on the coast. The situation at Pylos soon became critical when the Spartans, seeing the seriousness of the threat, decided to act quickly and send a considerable force to besiege the Athenian position and blockade the port. The Spartans deployed both their infantry and fleet to surround Pylos, attempting to cut off supplies and force the Athenians to surrender by starvation. However, the Athenians, taking advantage of their naval superiority, were able to keep supply lines open and receive reinforcements and supplies across the sea. In a reversal of roles, the Athenian fleet, commanded by Cleon, arrived to reinforce Demosthenes at Pylos. The arrival of this additional fleet not only boosted the morale of the defenders, but also complicated the situation for the Spartans, who now faced a battle on two fronts, on land and at sea. The conflict reached a decisive point on the island of Sphacteria, located off the coast of Pylos, a contingent of Spartan soldiers, consisting of approximately 420 men, was trapped on the island, surrounded by Athenian forces. The Spartans found themselves in a desperate situation. For 72 days, the Spartans held out in extreme conditions, facing food shortages, lack of water, and constant minor attacks by the Athenians. The situation in Sphacteria became a mess. The Athenians could not drive the Spartans from the island, and the Spartans could neither escape nor receive reinforcements. In this context, the Athenian leaders, Cleon and Demosthenes, decided to launch a decisive assault against the island, hoping to break the Spartan resistance once and for all. The final assault by the Athenians was vicious. Demosthenes led the Athenian hoplites in a series of coordinated attacks. The Athenians used their numerical superiority and knowledge of the terrain to corner the Spartans, cutting off any chance of retreat. The Spartans, despite their legendary bravery, began to perish under the pressure of the Athenians. Finally, against all odds and in defiance of the expectations of both sides, the Spartans surrendered. This surrender was a severe blow to Spartan prestige, as it was considered that a true Spartan never surrendered. The capture of the Spartans at Sphacteria, many of them belonging to the Spartan nobility, was a symbolic and strategic victory for Athens. It provided Athens with a valuable bargaining chip and proved that even Greece's most feared warriors could become defeated and captured. For Sparta, the defeat at Sphacteria was a humiliation. The loss of so many valuable soldiers and the surrender of a Spartan force were devastating blows to their military reputation. The Spartan surrender at Sphacteria was especially significant because it challenged the image of invincibility and the Spartan code of honor, which glorified fighting to the death. This defeat forced Sparta to reconsider its tactics and seek new ways to counter the Athenian threat. The Battle of Delius in 424 BC, the Athenians, under the command of the strategist Hippocrates, undertook an ambitious campaign in the region of Boeotia, 
This operation aimed to expand Athenian influence in the region by fortifying the city of Delio and using it as a base of operations to launch future raids. Boeotia was a region of strategic importance, controlled by a confederation of cities allied with Sparta, led by Thebes. The Athenians moved quickly toward Delio, located near the northeastern coast of Boeotia. The plan was to build sturdy fortifications that would ensure control over the city and provide a secure base from which they could launch operations against the Boeotian forces and their Spartan allies. Hippocrates led his troops by personally supervising the construction of the defenses. However, the Athenian move did not go unnoticed. The Boeotian forces, alerted by the activity at Delium, began to mobilize. The Boeotian Confederation, known for its military discipline and ability to act quickly, assembled an army under the command of Pagandas, an experienced and astute Theban general. Pagandas saw the seriousness of the Athenian threat and decided to engage them before they could consolidate their position. The Boeotian forces quickly marched toward Delius, determined to intercept and defeat the Athenians. Pagundas planned a strategy that capitalized on the advantages of the terrain and the disposition of his troops. Meanwhile, the Athenians, confident of their numerical superiority and the quality of their hoplites, prepared to engage the Boeotians in a pitched battle. The battle was fought near Delius, on the ground that favored the defenders. The Athenians formed their ranks in a classic hoplite formation, with their surrounding shields and spears ready to repel any attack. Hippocrates, leading from the front, was confident that his men could withstand the enemy onslaught and hold their position. Pagandas, for his part, adopted an innovative tactic. He divided his army into two wings and hid a significant part of his cavalry in a nearby forest. This maneuver was intended to surprise the Athenians and destabilize their ranks. During the engagement, he ordered his cavalry to make a surprise attack on the Athenian left flank, causing confusion and panic among the enemy ranks. At the same time, he launched a frontal charge with his heavy infantry. The battle began with a series of direct engagements between the Athenian hoplites and the Boeotians. The well-trained and disciplined Athenians initially managed to hold their line and repel the frontal attacks. However, Pagunda's tactical surprise soon began to take effect. The Boeotian cavalry, suddenly emerging from the forest, charged the Athenian left flank with great momentum. The attack of the Boeotian cavalry was destructive. The Athenians, taken by surprise, found themselves at a disadvantage and began to crumble. Confusion and panic quickly spread through the Athenian ranks. The hoplites, accustomed to fighting in close formations, were unprepared to face a cavalry charge from an unprotected flank. Seeing his left flank collapse, Hippocrates attempted to reorganize his forces and counter the attack, but the situation quickly deteriorated. The Boeotians, taking advantage of the chaos, launched a renewed frontal attack with their infantry, putting even more pressure on the Athenians. During the confusion, Hippocrates was mortally wounded and fell on the battlefield, further aggravating the disorganization and demoralization of the Athenian troops. The defeat of the Athenians at Delius was complete. Their lines were broken, and the panic-stricken soldiers began to flee in disarray. The Boeotians, under the command of Pagandas, pursued the retreating Athenians, inflicting heavy casualties and securing a decisive victory. The Athenians suffered significant losses, and the Battle of Delius became one of the worst defeats for Athens during the first phase of the Peloponnesian War. The Battle of Delius had important military and political consequences. For Athens, the defeat in Boeotia was a severe blow. It underscored the limitations of its land strategy and highlighted the need to reevaluate its tactics and approach to warfare. The death of Hippocrates, a respected commander, was also a significant loss for the Athenians, who had to face not only the military setback but also the need to find new leaders capable of guiding their troops in future campaigns. Politically, the defeat weakened Athens' position in the region and weakened its ability to project power in Boeotia. The polis allied with Athens began to question the effectiveness of its leadership and to reevaluate their alliances. 
Confidence in Athens' ability to protect its allies and maintain its supremacy in the region was seriously shaken. For the Boeotians, and particularly for Thebes, the victory at Delium consolidated their position as a formidable military force and a valuable ally of Sparta. The successful tactics of Pagandas and the resounding defeat inflicted on the Athenians demonstrated the ability of the Boeotians to confront and overcome one of the most powerful powers in Greece. This strengthened the Boeotian-Spartan alliance and increased the influence of Thebes in the Boeotian Confederation. Despite this victory, the war was far from over. The war would continue with new battles and campaigns. The Peloponnesian War would continue to remain a conflict that would shape the destiny of the Greek polis. However, during this war, an opportunity for peace arose. The Peace of Nicias, a seemingly impossible agreement, what motivated the leaders of Athens and Sparta to seek a negotiated end to the conflict. This video has been created for the Mythophiles and History Channel. Thank you for joining us for a new story. See you next time.